Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two guys, guys in a ride. ride. Today, Nate, tell us where we're at. Oh, we are at a boat show. The we're at the Progressive Boat Show at the Minneapolis Convention Center. That's right. So what are we taking a look at? We are taking a look at boats and personal watercraft. That's right. But say, before we do, take a moment, hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. So what do you say, Nate? Let, let's go look, look for, for a ride. ride. All right. Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today I'm here with Keith, Keith. Pro Fisherman <laughs> with Nitro Boats. Keith, nice to meet you. Good to be here. Yeah, I fish uh, walleyes up north, so uh, up in, here in this area up here. So I've been with uh, Nitro quite a few years, and we were lucky enough to get to design some boats for them, especially the interior. So I guess we're going to talk about the ZV20. Yes, we are, and that's it's one of your newest ones out? Right, yeah. Last year, uh, one of my other partners, Chase Parsons, ran this boat last year kind of as the prototype and just really worked out well. So uh, they introduced it this year at the show here and it's been a lot of lot of interest in it. I'll, I'll bet and we're lucky to be able to talk to one of the people that helped design the boat. So <laughs> you start us off wherever you'd like. Well basically the, the ZV20 is the littler brother of the ZV21. Our ZV21 has been around about seven years now and we spent a lot of time with the layout of the boats in particular. You know walleye fishermen are pretty diverse. We fish up in the front on the bow, we we'll trawl out of the back, we anchor from the front and fish out of the back. So we've got a lot of different stations and ways that we fish. Yeah. So that's what we spend a lot of time with. The Nitro uh, um, engineers are great at hulls. You know, they build not only Nitros, but trackers and regions. I mean, they build a lot of boats. So they got great engineers to work on the hulls. And we have, I think, the best hull around as far as rough water and flat water speed and things. But where they let us do a lot of work is in the interior. So okay. that's where uh, we do a lot of design and testing. One of the first things is you'll notice the big front deck. Again, we do a lot of our jigging up here. We'll pull bottom bouncers up here. But that front deck is also real nice laid out as far as having lots of storage up here. You know, we've even got things like a, like a cooler here, a big insulated coolers. We got live well on the other side, or bait well on the other side. So they really took a good advantage of all of the space up under the deck so that we can store a lot of things. So, so the next thing back here is the councils here. Again, they do a lot of things just like putting little storage areas yeah, in there. Yeah, that's just really neat. Anywhere you can get storage in a boat is a good thing. So yes. Always find something to put in it. On the other side is actually not storage, but you get to all of your electronics. I was going to say. Your fuses, your wires, everything you'd mount, where you typically got to be on your back under the council. Well, God bless the man that made that one. <laughs> so, yeah, we really like Boy, that deal. That is uh, handy. Councils. One of the key things on the councils, especially the driver's side council, is when you get to a little bit bigger boat like this, the trend in walleye fishing is to have two fairly big units, 12s or even 16 inch units up there. So we designed a multi-level council on that so that you could mount two units up there. You can still see over them to drive. You can still see under them to see all the gauges. So that was actually- Tricky maneuver. It doesn't look super hard, but it was hard. <laughs> it was, oh, it took I'm, a lot of, I'm sure it was. A lot of different experimenting to get that just right. Uh, very comfortable uh, positions to sit here. You know, we got the real nice seats in it. Again, more storage under the council. Super big rod locker in it. Uh, we have it where- yeah, It goes the whole length of the floor. The whole length. Is it tube? Like 10 tubes on top. Okay. And then a big open area on the bottom. So you can carry, I bet you, 20 more rods and rod socks. You run those all down there. You run the rods you're probably gonna run in the day up on the top and everything is right there at your fingertips. So uh, just, again, just a layout thing that makes it really, really nice. In the back here, again, a lot of times walleye fishermen do a lot of trolling. We'll use our kicker engines to do that. So you want to have some room back here to work. Uh, one thing I didn't mention on the front also is, but our in the places you would fish, all of our uh, carpeting is padded. 
because we stand a lot when we fish, yeah. so we pad the carpeting yeah, so it's nice and cushioned. Knees and feet will just feel a lot better at the end of the day. Uh, we carry a lot of tackle. Where we carry most of the tackle is in these side boxes. These side boxes in this boat, I believe, can hold like 18 370 boxes, so the bigger plastic boxes. So crankbaits, spinners, jigs, everything. You got two of those on each side. Then in the back, we even have more storage. And this actually has a lift out box in it. So we can get to pumps or hoses and things. But this is really durable, so we can put things like our anchors, our tools, our heavy stuff right. that we don't want banging around in our nice compartments. So it's a really, uh, it, it, again, a lot of simple looking things, but just really, really functional things. Well, and, and, and that's the nice thing about, you know, these, these boat companies having fishermen like yourself. Right drive, ride them in tournaments, fish with them for a while, right. and, and to find out what else do we need to do to make it a boat that fish Right, because really you only have so much room and, and you've got to, you know, there's always trade-offs, storage, yep. floor space, uh, how close you want to be to the walls to fish and things like that. So everything's a trade-off. The nice thing is they listen to us pro fishermen, um, put everything in the boat that makes it easy to get to, can store all of my gear, don't have to take stuff out at night, um, runs great in rough water, runs great in flat water, has a big gas tank in it, can carry five batteries so that I have two for my starting and accessories. Are they under the floor here? Right under the there, recess. with the chargers. So you lift Which up that- Which is so handy. Lift up that cover, all five are right there with wow. the chargers easy, and everything. easy to work on. So, Again, just a really well designed and really well weighted boat. That's the other thing about boats, they gotta be, you can't like yeah. get your batteries up front and it doesn't run good. You can't get your gas tank too far up. You gotta get everything in just the right place. Even like you look at the transom on this boat, maybe you can't see it real well with these stuff, but they've got things like, you got a perfectly flat transom on here. What that does is add a lot of strength to the boat, but then you can mount things like trim tabs on here. Trim tabs is one of the things in walleye fishing that's really trending now because with trim tabs you can actually adjust the attitude of side to side of your boat. Okay. The trim on your engine lets you adjust the attitude right. front to back. But these trim tabs go side to side. We put jack plates on ours. This one has a setback plate. But everything is mounted to the transom instead of hanging on the transom. And that makes for a lot stronger, more durable boat. So Now the fuel tank is... The fuel here? thing is just ahead of the batteries. So oh, it kind of so centers right, right in the, in the center, middle. So you get a Which again is what you want because that weight in the center makes this boat track really good. So if you're trolling yep. or if you're pulling it with the trolling motor, it, it follows where exactly where you want to go and doesn't get blown off 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 course. So, so yeah. So here, here's a question from somebody who's never had a kicker motor on. Okay. There, and maybe some of our viewers are out there that have never had one. When you use the kicker motor, my thought would be the tendency for the boat to always want to turn one direction because the motor's lopsided. Right, because right, if you right put side. it straight ahead, it actually wants to feel right. a little that way, and so, it will. So there's so a little just, adjustment you when you have those. You just go a little off right. centered, and yeah. that's fine. Yeah, or a lot of Learn times something. we just use that kicker to control speed, and we actually steer with our tro bow mount because oh, they're all remote control. Oh, so you can nice. sit there and run and steer, not run it real so hard. So you can you can control the trolling motor from with, from a key fob right around your neck you can actually <laughs> we actually have it where we can control our Folks, i guess my trolling motor is a little <laughs> older than this actually our trolling motors have a it's called tail fin it with a remote control i can turn that too so i don't even have to walk back to it to turn it so i can just sit anywhere in the boat i want <laughs> run my front run my back i've got a power pole i can put that up and down with a key fob so so three days later when you leave dock and you have everything adjusted <laughs> now i'm joking now everything's good to go when i go out so so let's talk about the the the, the motor you've got here this is this is not the one that would come with the v if you ordered the boat but well, it's an you, option if you go in the bass pro or cabela's catalog you'll see that the boat comes with a standard engine 250 i believe yeah 225 which runs the boat good this one is set up more for tournament fishing so they put the 300 pro xx and those are the new uh they just came out last year the mercury engines this would be a v8 engine it's got high displacement in it okay so what that means is is that the pistons are bigger the cylinders are bigger yeah. every time it strokes it's pushing more power so that keeps it a much more lightweight engine all right more okay. fuel efficient still a four stroke so it's really quiet but it's really powerful high displacement so that's like the perfect engine to go on this boat even the 225 is a the new pro uh, the new uh, four strokes yep. but all the way up to this 300 and that 300 will push this uh 
20 foot boat. And again, nitro we intentionally make these boats heavier and like stronger this, that you, because it cuts the waves better. But even uh, with that heavier boat, 20 foot hull, 300 horse, you're still gonna go 60 miles a gallon. Two guys, full full equipment, all your gas, wow. still go 60 miles an hour. So Holy it's smoke. just a great, great rig for both tournaments or if guys just like to fish. Uh, many of the best walleye fishings are in big lakes. Yeah. Mille Lacs and yep. Leech and the reservoirs in the Dakotas, the Great Lakes, Green Bay. All of those are where we catch big walleyes. Yep. They're big bodies of water. So this is the kind of style of boat that many guys go to so they can fish it in a lot of different conditions. So five batteries. Yeah, so you only nice. have one in there now, but. No, yeah, yeah. But, but nice center kind of mounted kill switch. for your weight distribution right. and everything. Plus so. your chargers are right in there. And they externally plug in out here. And then you can just shut oh, everything that's off. that's so cool. You can turn the whole boat off yeah. with that switch. We typically don't. But, no, but I mean, if you were going to work on a battery the winter, change, you could just, you know. Yep, turn the whole whole system off. Wow. Very nice. Let's do, take a look at this. Here's your tackle box, well, storage. Just a little things like that. You went I mean, and, oh, what are they store in there? But swivels, hooks, sure. Uh, you know, extra keys. Oh, all the little uh, things that. Where do you put them? You know? Right, right. You don't want it just floating right. around everywhere. So look at. I mean, huge Here. rod locker. Look you know, at that. There's the tubes up there. Oh yeah, about. yeah. And, and then, then the bottom's got, got a big area where you can just put rods and rod socks. Now you've got another door. What does that go to? That's access to the top of the gas tank. Okay. Yeah. I like the uh, the air shocks on here. Oh yeah. That's where you put the liar fisherman. The one that said the, big, <laughs> the biggest one of the day, no, but, but even, didn't really get it. Even little stuff like compartments under here. You know, so you can again just put stuff in there. Right. You always find stuff. So tell us a little bit out. You know, obviously, okay, you've got your your fish finder up here. Right. Um, you know, what a, what what is this down here? So first of all, let me talk. You know, I run the ranch. Right. It's kind of the same thing. This is that multi level I was talking about. So I can mount one here, and then we direct mount one right here if okay. we want it. All of the information's right in our kind of in our face. Right. We can but look over I the can top. I can see that your eyes and are good. I can still see all my right gauges here. down yep. here. This is actually the uh, a touch pad that lets you run all of your. Uh, uh, live wells, all your bait wells, uh, your navigation lights. Instead of having toggle right. switches everywhere, you can just, just run everything screen. right on here. They don't have it hooked up. Right. And and since, since you now, do you have one of those touch screens on your boat? Yes. So yeah, our boats come with my, this my is the standard question. standard deal here. This so, even has something called first fish in it. So what it does is, if you touch that button, it will start the live well yeah. at full speed. To so fill it fills it. up, and it'll start the recirculation as soon as it it knows the timer how long that'll take. Then it shuts back the the fill to and slower, the and they recirculate to a time recirculation. So okay, so. So the reason I asked you if you use one of these is, is, is I think, you know, for, for people like me who have older boats, don't have the touch screens. And we're using them on our phones, but anytime right. you see them in a boat, you see them a lot. Yeah. Question is, what happens when they get wet? What happens when your finger's wet? Is you know, it still it's, conductive? It's just like all of our units now are touch screens. They're made to be out in the wet. Right. So it, it has no problems at all with wet or, wow. or even cold. You know, up here we get a lot of cold. Right. I fish a lot in right. you know, October, November, December. Even a little glaze of ice on there it'll still so touch just like your phone right i mean your awesome. phone it's just that same so way. what what uh tell us about these buttons over here this is what runs those trim tabs i was talking oh, about oh yeah so you okay. can easily and then it's got so if you're driving along and you're all of a sudden your waves are coming in from this side you want to tip this side up a little yep you would simply hit down on that side okay to make it go down and it would tip the boat like that back up and now the waves are hitting more of the bottom of the boat instead of the side of the boat okay for years you probably done it. You get a hard side wind. Yeah. Your buddy and you are sitting here, and you say, "Hey, if you can move right behind me, it will yeah. tip the boat up." <laughs> yes. It's kind of like yes. inboard trim tabs. Yes. yes. Now you got a little button. You don't have to ask. You can sit right there. And I'll just tip this side up, and we'll be good. <laughs> now, so. And then you've got little little LED indicators that tell you where kind of yeah, where the tabs are set. So you can tell if you got them. You know, the other thing you can do if it's rough out, you can jam it down so your nose is pushed down harder and it yep. doesn't bounce as much. A lot of things you wow. can do with trim tabs now that we could never do before. So what? This is a gauge. You're going to put a gauge under here. Uh, okay. It's got the oh, it's smart the, craft gauges. Okay. So that'll give you all your uh, uh, motor information. You know, water temperatures, hours you've run, how, nice. how fast it's chewing up gas, things like that. So wow. these are all your standard, just standard gauges, you know, water pressure and, and fuel and speed and RPM. So it'll so. tell you how fast 
you're eating, you're using gas? Yeah, this actually is connected. It has a GPS, or it actually goes off the speed speedometer on the engine. The okay, little, yeah. And, and then it knows how fast it's chewing. So it'll tell you, oh, right now you're burning uh, three miles, or uh, 20 gallons per hour, which is three miles per right. gallon. You know, so uh, wow, it'll actually tell you even the three miles per gallon. I, I, I'm used to it. Well, the needle's on the red. I think that means we can make it back <laughs> yeah. across the lake again. The nice thing is it's real precise. So you can set this even to clear it and set it to zero when you gas the boat up. That's okay. what I do. And it will tell you exactly how much fuel has been used down to the tenth of a gallon. Wow. So if, especially as a tournament angler, I'm kind of making decisions. Hey, can I run a little further and right. still get back home? So I can tell exactly how much gas, even though the gas gauge might not be exactly perfect this one is always perfect so wow, smart gauge. just just amazing yeah. the, the, the technology so yeah this is a whole just you know a lot can get done here we do a lot of graphing for uh, uh, walleye fishing we can now look at things like side scan down scan regular sonar I can even hook an underwater camera up to my Lorance right. units and see them right on the screen so a lot of information is, is you spend a lot of time here just watching those two units until you see the right stuff Stuff and that's when you actually start fishing so okay so so explain this to me because I, I I mostly fish northern bass okay so um, and, and I don't have a big boat but it floats right <laughs> and it works um, so you have two different um, fish, fish finders, finders for lack yeah. of a better term okay why the two different ones what what are you looking for specifically different on each I, one I think it really comes down to we have two units and bigger screens now because we have so much more information. Okay. 20 years ago, all we had was down sonar. Right. That's all you had. So you could split a screen and look at that. A little bit later, mapping and GPS came. Right. So the other side could be that. But now we have mapping. We have, like I said, down scan, side scan, live scope. We've got uh, uh, cameras we can hook up. There's all this information you can get. So you you so got mapping on there, you know, where they show right. the contours and everything. So you want a nice big screen of that. And then the other screen is all your sonar information. So what you're saying is maybe you, know, you might have three or four screens eventually. Well, I, I, I think we've kind of maxed out or, on the size of our consoles. But here's here, here's the next thought for you. Since cars are starting to use head head up displays. Oh yeah, like now you have a whole entire windshield <laughs> full sure of we'll, information. I'm sure we'll have that. <laughs> we really do have that much, especially for well, you do. The technology is it's already there. So it's much, just, and, and the more I can look at, the better chance I got of picking out a spot right. that's going to catch fish. Right. You know, even simple things like looking to the side and seeing a rock pile, or seeing a little right. rock edge, or a little something some gravel where you might instead of sand. All of those things can mean fish. Right. So you got to pay attention to all of them. And that's why I run a 12-inch Lawrence unit, and I run a 16-inch. Wow. And at 16 inch, I quarter up, and yep. that's all got different views different. at the bottom. So, wow. It's fun. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. a video game, right? Yeah. Darn it, I have to go to work again today. <laughs> I gotta go start out the boat. Can so, we yeah. pop this cover off just for a second, just sure. so people can get to see what yeah. that looks like? I mean, it's just just standard. Again, I don't run hummingbirds, but no. But you got a nice size screen. On there. I believe these so, are tens. So this is a ten inch. So ten you inch. Imagine my sixteen is. Oh well, yeah, I, like I can. Like a, I can watch the Packer. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? So, yeah. Wow, what really what good a, stuff. What an absolutely beautiful boat and well designed. You know, yeah. I mean, it's uh, for fishermen like myself. I don't fish as much, but I always appreciate when I get a boat that's got some thought into it, right. not just well, let's throw this in. Well, that was the beauty. Like I said, the, the engineers do hauls. I test it for them. I'll tell them if it runs good and stuff. But inside, they listen to us and tell, wherever we want storage, wherever we want our rods, wherever we want to mount things, they do it for us, and that's been a real nice thing down at Nitro. We've been that with down with Tracker Nitro about 20 some years now and it's just every year just you know they trust us more and more to do this stuff and they just take care of the hauls and it's a great great uh, partnership. Wow. Well what what an amazing uh, boat and just I mean just floored by the storage, yeah. the, the, the largeness upside the flat floor, you know the, the technology is unreal. Um, like I said, the ZV-21 is where it started. It's a 21-foot boat, and we built the 19, his little brother, and now we built the kind of the, the middle kid here. But this ZV-20, they put a lot, lot of stuff into it. It's just really, really nice. Boat. It's beautiful. Keith, thank you so much Glad for spending it, time with us. Yeah, what no a beautiful problem. boat. Thanks for your help on making it a better boat. Thank you.